Well, today's project involves the pond, which is 600 feet that way. I'm going to install air line from the corner of the barn here. I'm going to dig a trench, put in an inch and a half uh, irrigation, poly irrigation line, and it's going to be cheaper to run an air line that 600 feet from the pump here at the barn than it would be to run electric from here 600 feet. I figured up for the uh, amount of draw and everything to be safe, what I would need would be like a 2 aught gauge wire, which is, I can't remember exactly the cost now, but it was double or triple the cost of the air line. So uh, I have uh, run a dedicated circuit. This, is, this outlet is the only thing on this circuit. This is a 10 gauge uh, Romex, I guess you call it, 10 gauge wire that runs all the way over to the breaker panel at the other end of the building. Uh, right now I just have my uh, boat trickle charger plugged in so it's drawing like very, very minimal voltage. Um, but I'm gonna mount, it's kind of hard to see, it's a little dark in here. I'm gonna mount the air pump uh, right here. And uh, so it's gonna go in the ground here and I'm gonna put it about three feet deep, maybe just a bit shallower uh, to save time. And you can see a little bit of dirt uh, disturbed down there in the woods. We have to go through uh, have to go through about 50 or 60 yards of uh, just a path through the woods. Uh, it's real heavily rooted there, and I'm afraid that uh, the trencher that I rented would not be able to break through some of those larger roots. So I went ahead and uh, borrowed my dad's backhoe about a week ago, and I dug that portion of it. And it took me three hours to dig that 60 yard stretch. And that's when uh, that kind of made up my mind that I I need a trencher if I'm going to go, you know, significantly further. Uh, so this is the trencher that I rented. The uh, it's supposed to do a four inch wide trench, 48 inches deep, and it's a little walk behind outfit, gas powered, of course Vermeer. So uh, the weather's they're actually calling for rain here in about two hours. I don't know how much we're going to get exactly, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and see how much digging I can get done before the rain starts. So uh, I will catch you guys up here in a little bit. Well, that box contains the uh, aerator kit that I purchased off of Amazon. Uh, it's a half horsepower pump. It's supposed to have two aerators or two diffusers and then uh, two sections of weighted line, 100 foot long each. I think I paid about 650 bucks for it. Came in just a few days. Uh, it's been sitting here waiting on me to dig that ditch. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get it out of the box and make sure everything's in good order. Well, that was as good a packaging as I've ever seen something come from China. Uh, they had plenty of foam all the way around the pump and uh, it was packed in there very well. So what do you get for 650 bucks? Well, um, I got the diffuser and hose diffuser and hose uh, stuck a magnet to it this base this base looks like it's it's probably about I don't know I'm gonna guess eighth inch thick it's kind of heavy stuck a magnet uh, up against it and it won't stick so the the base is non-magnetic stainless which is really high quality um, that uh, stainless fitting there is magnetic and of course brass uh, the brass fittings are you know set into that the uh, pump, you know, pretty unremarkable. Um, so what you got going on here, they, uh, this kit gives you, or, you know, sells you a, um, a little splitter valve, or a, a splitter with, uh, you know, shut off valve on each side. So then I was a little confused in looking at all these uh, pictures and videos and stuff online. All these, all these rocking piston pumps have two ports on each side of the head. So this port here isn't—it doesn't go into anything. I actually started up the, the pump just for a minute, just to to see what was going on with all this stuff. Um, so this port here doesn't do anything. I stuck my finger over it. There's no air going in or out of it. Uh, so there's nothing going on there. Uh, down here is the intake, and they give you a little uh, thread in, uh, little air filter. So that'll that'll thread in there. That's the intake. If you shut off both these valves, 
the air then will pop off. This is a pop off and overpressure uh, regulator. So I, I tested it just to make sure that's because that's what it looked like to me. So I went ahead and shut both these valves. The air didn't have anywhere to get out here. You can hear it pop and then it blows air out here. So that's uh, just to protect the system, I guess. Um, one thing I didn't expect in the package that wasn't in the marketing, you know, wasn't advertised at all is this timer, which, you know, at first glance is, oh, it's a freebie thing. Well, no, not until you look at the instructions. It does come with instructions. But there's an insert here. Very important. Uh, it's a suggested to stop the unit for half hour every two hour running to avoid overheating. I am not thrilled with that because um, this thing is supposed to have been able to handle running 24 seven, which is, which is what I intended to do. And in fact, when you flip through here in the manual, it talks about running 24 seven. Let's see where we at. Yeah, here we go. So this is the startup procedure. This is uh, you know, just running it a little bit at a time, building up the tolerance of your pond so you don't roll your pond over. Doesn't really, I don't think this really has anything to do with the pump functioning. It's more about not, not you know, killing your pond. Um, but right here, day seven, beginning running the system, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And that's exactly what I intended to do. So, they got an overheat problem out of this thing apparently and they give you a timer as their little fix for it so i think i'm gonna run it 24 7 anyhow and just see how it holds up if i burn the pump up well i'm not pushing real deep that's the thing there shouldn't be a whole lot of uh hopefully there won't be a whole lot of restriction on the pump that it won't be operating under high psi because the deepest parts of that pond are only 10 feet deep. So this thing is rated to run like 30 feet deep or something like that and run 50 PSI or some, something, you know, it's, I think it's rated up to 30 feet anyhow. Uh, I might be wrong about that PSI, but um, with me only running 10 feet deep, I'm hoping that it won't be that much strain on the pump. So I'll be able to operate it 24 seven. Also, uh, I'm going to keep it in that barn. It's going to be, you know, plenty of air moving across it. Um, it'll be clean and dry in there. Um, so it won't be like the, I'll keep an eye on my filter, make sure my filter doesn't get restricted. And, uh, you know, hopefully that'll help. But uh, what I want to do, though, before I get it out there in the dirt and mud and everything, since I'm going to run the pump into a single line and then go 600 feet out, then to my splitter, I'm gonna go ahead and take this fitting. Hopefully I can take this fitting off of here. Uh, see if I can take this fitting off of here, put a single barb fitting to attach to our uh, larger diameter line that we're putting in the ground. And uh, then when we get to the pond, there's my distribution box with a bunch of miscellaneous fittings. I'll show you all that when we get out to the pond, but we're gonna bury that in the ground at the pond's edge. I'll catch you guys up in a bit. Well, here we are bright and early the next day, and uh, you may or may not be able to tell, I've got the ditch filled in from the barn all the way down here in, uh, in through the woods here where I had this dug with a backhoe already. Now this had been dug for, I don't know, a couple of weeks, been rained on a couple of times, so this was really muddy down through here. Um, I was pushing the ditch in with the tractor last night in the dark, so it's still kind of a mess. It needs cleaned up, but it's enough I can get through here. Um, the halfway point, is that little tree right there so we are halfway done um i didn't get any footage of me digging yesterday i was in a time crunch i was afraid the rain was going to come in so that's why i wanted to i just wanted to make it down here to get this filled in before it got rained on and turned to mud again so uh the forecast for today is pretty good we got a little bit of showers last night when i was filling the ditch in up there uh, but the forecast for today is good so that roll is, uh, again, this was a 600 foot roll of inch and a half. This is uh, considered irrigation line. It's only uh, rated for 100 PSI, which will be no problem for what I'm doing here. Um, but uh, man, that's gotta be six, seven foot diameter. And uh, unrolling that by myself was a bear. It's not on a spool, so it's all loose. So it's flopping everywhere. And uh, especially coming down through the, 
down through that trail there with a ditch down the middle i was hugging the side it was just it was a real bear wrangling that down through there um so you can see where i stopped the ditch is right here i'm gonna go ahead and uh because i am pushing my luck i mean it's exactly like 600 and i think it ended up being like 602 feet to where i want to go i'm going to go ahead and roll this line out and make sure it'll make it where i want to go because uh, if it won't i'm gonna have to dig my ditch somewhere else so i'm gonna go ahead and roll the line out make sure it fits then uh i'll run the uh i'll run that little ditcher right up next to the line and i'll catch you guys up here in a little bit well i got that line all unfurled here and i wanted to make it to this spot right here i could probably use another foot of pipe but i sure wouldn't want to cut it any closer than i did it's been another full day out here um, I started trenching at 8 o'clock this morning and I just now finished covering uh, covering the pipe up uh, that trencher is painfully slow it took me over five hours just to cut that 300 foot trench um, laying the pipe in went real quick uh, covering it back up went pretty quick um, Figuring out this uh, junction box here uh, and plumbing that up took a little bit. So uh, this is an irrigation valve box. I thought this would be a pretty clean little install. Uh, of course, it's a mess right now. You know, everything's wet. Uh, it got really sloppy when I was. I trenched the uh, the two lines that go down to the diffusers that will go down to the diffusers out in the pond. I went ahead and trenched that in so that all the all the hose, all the pipe is going to be uh, hidden. Um, in this valve box here again this is a uh, uh, irrigation box but you can see what i got going on in here or maybe you can maybe you can't it's getting pretty dark so i got the inch and a half line comes down I had to do a bunch of reducers um, to get it down to this uh, manifold that came with the uh, came with the air compressor um, so i've got a little coil uh, each line uh, just extra you know in case something happens I need to get in there and do some work or whatever kept a little bit of hose yeah, it kind of coiled up in there uh, I've got the valve both of them shut off for now um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tomorrow I will go up to the uh, barn and get that end finished up and uh, I want the uh, I want the pump to be running when I place my diffusers so I've got my lines all uncoiled and got those nice and straight out there into the field a little bit i'm going to go ahead and attach the diffusers just to keep any bugs or anything from getting up in the air lines um, i'm going to go ahead and do that right now then tomorrow i'll be back up at the barn we'll get that end figured out and uh, get this system done well here we are inside the barn and i've got everything uh, set up on this end of it so um, you can see I built a little shelf. It ain't pretty, but it should be uh, real functional. I put some stops to keep the thing, if it vibrates, to keep it from walking and uh, rubbing up against the wall. Also back here to keep it from walking up against the metal over here. Um, I got a lip on the other two sides of it to keep the thing from walking off the shelf. 
Uh, it has rubber feet, so you know that should help with vibration and everything. And uh, and also considering vibration, I wanted to use something really flexible here, um, you know, between the pump and that hard line. Um, so this is three eighths inch inside diameter um, high pressure fuel line. It's for fuel injection systems. Um, your typical three eighths fuel line is rated for 50 psi. I'm not sure what the rating is on this, but it's supposed to be like way way higher so it should be plenty uh, for what we're doing here um, I got it uh, stepped you know stepped up from the 3 8 line through a couple of adapters to get into that inch and a half irrigation line got it clamped there to the uh, baseboard and it goes again from here underground down a ditch 600 feet over to the pond so uh, let's go ahead and uh, We'll plug it in. I'll let you hear how quiet it is. It's pretty quiet. Doesn't look like it's walking at all. So let's head on over to the pond and uh, get everything buttoned up on that end of it. Well, I thought I'd run my tools up here to the house real quick. There's a tom strutting in the backyard. So I grabbed some corn. Chick, chick, come on. Come on. He's pretty nervous of me standing back here. He's used to me being in the uh, doorway throwing stuff out. He was strutting for that bearded hen, though. I just seen her walk back in the woods. She's still too nervous to come up with me and uh, me walking around the yard. Chick, 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 come on. He's got a real spindly, real thin little beard. But he's got longer spurs than some of the other toms do. So I'm thinking he's maybe a year older than the other birds, but uh, real thin little beard. It's kind of funny. He was uh, he was just strutting for a bearded hen. She just walked back that way. And her beard is, well, there I can see her through that step. Her beard is way bigger than his. Well, here we are, 600 feet from the barn at the pond. I've got the valves both open inside the box there. Um, you can see the lines, you know, I've buried them going down into the water and then I've got them pulled up here. Try to get all the twists and uh, curl and kink and all that stuff out of them and uh, lay them out nice and straight, more or less. The plan is to go get the canoe, which is over there, flip upside down in the weeds. Get the canoe, bring it over here and take them, you know, one at a time out and place them. I'm going to try to place them as gently as possible. I'm going to uh, try to lower them down with a rope to keep them from flipping upside down or anything. Um, you can see that uh, we got some rain today, so there's water sitting on top of them. But, uh, or that one's got water on it. This one doesn't really. You can probably hear it. And if I flip it up sideways, you can see the profile, how uh, kind of bulged out this uh, rubber membrane is with some air pressure behind it. Uh, I'm a little surprised at how much that swells up actually. Everything seems like it's functioning properly. Um, I do want to say uh, one thing about this kit. It was advertised as having check valves in, uh, in these bases. Um, I thought there was a check valve in here. I mean, they advertise that there's check valves in them. So I just figured it was right in here. There is no check valve. There's no check valves at all in this system. Um, I'm, I'm very disappointed about that. Uh, for me, hopefully it won't be a big deal because I don't really plan on ever shutting the pump off. But for, you know, a lot of folks that do shut their pumps off, when you turn the pump off, the air kind of comes out of the lines and some water, you know, kind of back flushes into the thing. And the water is not really an issue, but the sediment and stuff and the silt in the water then goes back inside your apparatus and you're gonna get it up inside, you know, silt's gonna settle out inside your lines, inside that rubber diaphragm and stuff like that. So these things were supposed to have check valves and I'm kind of irritated that they don't have any check valves. So that was sort of a, sort of one of the big deals for me, you know, in looking at these systems. So anyhow, you know, I guess buyer beware if you guys are looking at this system on, uh, on Amazon, there are no check valves in it. I'm going to go get that canoe and uh, see if we can get these things placed.
Well, I thought I'd bring you guys out here and uh, hopefully you can see and get a better idea of just how much air those, uh, those diffusers are putting out and how much water it's moving. I'm really impressed. I, I really did not expect this. Um, so hopefully it's showing up on camera, but uh, that's pretty impressive. Uh, just for comparison, we've got a little bit of a breeze off and on again. Um, the cattails are moving just a little bit over there, you can tell. And it's not enough to even turn the windmill. So the, the air stone for that windmill is under that uh, buoy over there. Um, you can see not a single bubble coming up. Of course, windmill's not turning at all. And that is exactly why we did this project. Uh, the windmill did okay in the wintertime. It's enough that uh, this past year we had... We probably had four inches of ice on the rest of the pond, but over here in this corner, it stayed open. So that was great. So uh, maybe we just run the air pump in the summertime, and uh, then in the wintertime, maybe we'll rely on the windmill. Well, I'm really happy with how this project turned out. If you like this video, click that thumbs up button. If you want to see me working on other stuff around the pond here, click the subscribe button. Until the next time, guys, keep on tinkering.